Want a tip to battle sadness and anxiety? Well, Dr. Judy has a good one. Take it away, Doc. All right, you guys. How about trying to give your negative emotions a name? Oftentimes, we believe that negative emotions are us. We identify ourselves by our negative emotions. So by externalizing your negative emotions and giving it an identity outside of yourself, it helps us to manage it better. So where this comes from is that negative emotions such as fear are evolutionary. They're actually trying to protect us, but sometimes our minds get a little too busy and it's doing it in a very hypervigilant way and not in a protective way. So just practice saying this, hey, Jimmy, I got this. Thanks for your help. Because that's really what it's about. We're trying to thank our minds for having the negative emotion for a function, but not over-identifying with it. Can I name my negative emotions, Drew? <laughs> <laughs> Can it be a name you like? Is this... Yes, it should a be a name this you like. This is part of you. Yeah. This is a friend. It's a friend of yours who's trying to protect you, that's but they're little... That's why I say little... thanks, Drew. Well, yeah. Negative well, emotions. Thank you, like, thank okay, you Drew. So I'll take it into Drew. account. Then I'll do Travis. Why oh. not? You? That was easy. Mine is busy, because my, my, my mind's a little busy body. So I hope, thanks, busy, I got it. Is the secret to weight loss a peace sign? I'm going to tell you how it could be in today's doctor's prescription. So let's say you're dishing up your next dinner. Create a little peace sign on your plate to help portion out your sizes. There are gonna be two smaller sections and one large section on your plate. And then what you do is you fill those smaller parts with whole grains and healthy proteins, then that largest section on the bottom, that's where you have the combo of the non-starchy and starchy fruits and veggies full of those antioxidants. Get as many of those as you can. That's what a healthy diet's about. And sometimes yeah. you just need a little visual reminder. And it works. Research actually shows eating these correct portions can reduce your daily caloric intake by up to a third. And the University wow. of Calgary did a study with obese patients who had diabetes, provided them with these portion control plates, such like we just showed. Those with the plate not only lost more weight, they were able to decrease their diabetes medications at wow. six months. That's awesome. So think about what it. What a if great it's tip. Simple as, it's, just, it's a nice reminder, right? Simple, yeah, a good, like, thoughtful tip. It's mindfulness, I really. Mean, it's making sure yeah. that you organize gets, your plate. It gets back to the it. kids. Take one of their little plates that has the dividers on it, and there you go. It's so cute. Well, like unless it. that plate is in toy jail, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> we all have our favorite guilty pleasures, right? Yes. Well, for some, it could be sugary cereal. In my Ooh. doctor's prescription, this is a healthy snack that will taste just as good as that sweet cereal you loved as a kid. So, docs, try this. Tell me what you think. It looks like Cocoa Puffs. It does. <laughs> Great, right? Mmm. Four ingredients in this tasty little snack. Olive oil, honey, cinnamon, and chickpeas. Each ingredient has health implications in a good way. Yes, dried chickpeas. So mm. drain and rinse the chickpeas, bake them in the oven for 45 minutes until they're crispy. That's the key. Toss them in a bowl with those other ingredients. Spread it out on a baking sheet for an additional 10 minutes until they caramelize. These chickpeas, what I love is they're rich in protein, as well as other things like folate, fiber, and iron. Also full of soluble fiber that can help naturally lower cholesterol and improve digestion. And we all know that when it comes to things like honey and, and cinnamon and olive oil, they have health benefits, but together it creates this milieu of not only heart health benefits, mm -hmm. but it tastes like it sugary tastes cereal. It really does. I could throw this in a bag. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. say, I'd take it to the airport and be on the airplane. Yep, instead yeah, of like the popcorn. Mm-hmm. Yummy. And your next bowel movement will thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but we will love the recipe as well as instructions on how to make this on our website. Want to know a simple way to be more productive in the morning? Yes. Ask Dr. Judy. She has the answer. All How can right. I be more productive, Dr. Judy? Well, do you self-reflect in the morning? Because just a few minutes of self-reflection can really improve our productivity. Does that mean like look at yourself in the mirror and yeah. no? Yeah, Dr. No. you do that every morning, right? Self-reflection sometimes sounds intimidating people, but it's not all about meditating. It's just about taking five to 10 minutes in the morning just to start off your morning in a calm and peaceful way. People can use different types of activities. You can go on a mindful walk, you can journal, you can do an inspirational reading, and try to focus on one question at a time. So 
what's my top value today, even dream of a vacation. But again, just make sure that you anchor it to something that you're doing each morning. So I do my self-reflection as soon as I wake up. Some people like to do it when they have coffee in the morning. That way you know that it's going to happen every single day. And there's some really cool statistics. People who spend 10 to 15 minutes reflecting in the morning had 23% better work performance. And people who use their commute to think and plan about their day felt less stressed, were more productive, and also said that they were less burned out overall. So I think it's a great thing for everybody to try and see how it fits. Good stuff. I think it was a little too deep for Dr. P. He's, he's self-reflecting. He, he's self-reflecting. Self -reflecting. Thank you. <laughs> Give me a moment. <laughs> I forgot to reflect this morning, so I'm doing it now. <laughs> Do you find yourself struggling to accomplish a task without getting distracted? Do you want to improve your productivity? Sure. Uh-huh, we uh -huh. all do. Yeah. Today's doctor's prescription will help you structure your day so you're getting the most out of it. It's called time blocking. Here's what you need to do. Schedule your day in 50, 10 time blocks. What does that mean? Find a comfortable spot, put away your cell phone, focus on the task at hand for 50 minutes, and when your timer goes off, enjoy 10 minutes of more freedom. Stand up, take a quick walk around the office, go ahead and check those texts. If you want, check social media, but then go back to that 50 minute work window of intense focus. Time blocking is a simple way to help manage your life better and should help increase the amount of work you accomplish in a day. Also making sure you get healthy breaks. It may be hard when you're in the middle of delivering a baby. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, I'm be like, that's don't my be 50. Right, yeah, well, no. You, <laughs> keep the, keep the head like right me, there, it's halfway up. Or me well. doing liposuction, I can't stop and say, okay, I'm gonna go take 10. No. But time blocking, give yeah. it a try if you've never tried it, and you may just be more productive. If you miss anything on today's show, head over to thedoctorstv.com.